स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया now where does all this lead to does it really make economic sense that is what the next few slides will tell you so here are the three contenders you have a luxury car okay this is a clo which was at that time one luxury car but now it's not available devu was the company which made this car and then you have this uh, skyship 600b and then you have tata sumo okay so when you do a cost benefit analysis in transportation essentially what you do is you look at the various costs and the various benefits and you try to get a monetary value of the benefit remove it from the costs the net cost can then be compared now what you do is you convert everything into monetary units it's not very easy things like cost of fuel the charges to be paid to the driver etc you can work out but how do you look at things like you have saved so many hours what is the money equivalent of that this is called as value of travel time saving value of travel time now value of travel time is a huge research area in transportation let's say if i ask you okay what would be the value of one hour reduction in your travel time when you go from a place to another place let's say you are doing this yatra okay or if we don't go to this yatra because many of you might say i don't want to do this yatra why are you making me do this yatra let's say from wherever your hometown is to iit bombay you travel today by a mode of transport say train it costs so much suppose i give you some other alternative which saves you 3 hours of time so let's say the journey is 10 hours and you reach there 3 hours early what would you put as the value of the saving in short what is the value of 3 hours of your travel time so think about it and i want a number from you so many rupees is the value of my travel time i also want you to think and tell me on what factors does this number depend first of all will it be the same number for you and for me it may not be so what does it depend on why will it be less for me and more for you or vice versa so does somebody have any number How many rupees per hour? Yes, let's get some number. Yeah, let's have a number. Thousand rupees per hour. On what basis do you get this number? <laughs> okay. So, but how do you say thousand? Why not five hundred? Why not one thousand five hundred? Yeah. So that means what you are saying is. A thousand rupees is the ballpark, so five hundred is less and thousand hundred is more. Once you fix the number, then you can say more or less. But how do you get this number? Hmm? If feel are at the feel can also be two rupees per hour. <laughs> There has to be some way of giving the logic. Okay, if you can't have the number, tell me on what basis will this number depend? so what do you do with this 3 hours saved okay so as you, as you said these 3 hours i will give it more to my family so he has valued as 1000 rupees per hour that is a questionable thing we don't know it could be it could be too high too less but one thing is what do you do with that time now if you are a vela fellow you have nothing to do okay you will say 3 hours more what is the big difference 
so many of us take an indirect journey we take a flight ticket we go to mumbai to bangalore we say direct flight or mumbai delhi is an example okay you take a direct flight it costs so much there is another flight which is via some city to our halt and it is much lower you will say oh chalta hai na kya farak hai no problem how does it make a big difference for me because that money saving is more important to you than you know reaching in 2 hours suppose it takes 4 hours to go to delhi instead of 2 hours it should not be a big deal unless you have something so important there that even 2 hours you cannot wait correct so there is a huge body of research on value of travel time savings it is different for air travel it is different for pedestrian travel it is different for road travel bus travel when you design a metro in a city right for example we have this metro which connects from ghatkopar to varsova so how many people will travel from that particular place to that particular place today they travel via andheri and then take an auto how much will they save one important aspect is what will be the time saving then you look at comfort you look at connectivity so whatever method you use that is a matter of debate and there is a huge i mean when i teach air transportation i take two classes on only vot estimation so we will discuss about it offline but it is important that this value of travel time saving should be considered to get a proper comparison okay so now let's look at the assumptions that we made in this study because these assumptions will uh, have to be considered by you okay so first thing is that this analysis is specific to only char dham yatra okay you cannot use it for mumbai to shirdi kind of a travel also no that is a different market and a different analysis will be there for that for char dham yatra which happens only from may to november but the airship and the vehicles that are purchased they will not remain idle from december to may maybe maybe in december you will have a maintenance one month maintenance but january february march april you will not say no no there is no passenger coming so just keep sitting nobody can keep or afford to keep transportation systems idling so we assume that they will be off season will be used in some other areas for example uh, january to march or april it could be the golden triangle circuit jaipur jodhpur delhi that area lot of people come so we are not assuming that the total cost will be recovered only on these months okay as i mentioned distance to travel by road is 7 uh, days because you are going to travel around 200 km per day which is a lot in hills actually okay a typical average speed in a hilly area i have traveled myself extensively in at least in the kumau area is not more than 30 km per hour that is the average you get if you don't stop but after every 3 hours you would like to stop for a cup of tea for a snack or just to rest just to stretch your limbs so practically it only comes to 20 25 km per hour so 200 km per hour means 10 hours in a day you are traveling on the road that's a lot but that's the upper limit okay now basically we are competing now between airship and luxury car because travel by airships will not come very cheap it will be expensive so it is so who are the people who will take it people who are hiring a luxury car today for that particular route and then in between we bring in also suv or tata sumo this is what common people will take so as i said no existing airship can do this route so we make an assumption that an enhanced version of skyship 600 with 13 seats unfortunately we do not at this point of time at that point of time sorry this was done in 2002 na so at that point of time we did not have so much knowledge about airships nobody at that time at least none of us at that time knew what it will cost to make an airship to meet this requirement so we had to make some assumptions one can challenge them today we are in a much better condition 
So if we are transporting 130 people per day and each airship can take 13 people, there are 10 airships required. To be, and each airship will come with the ground support equipment. And uh, 200 hours per month is what we fly the airship, 25 days, so we do not fly every day. We leave a uh, few days for bad weather or break and 8 hours a day is what, you can do it in 7 hours, so it is 8 hours a day is the total time. Okay. The cost benefit analysis was done for 8 years, so we assume that the airship life is 1800 hours, so after 8 years, you know the airship is now going to be completely depreciated, right? Now, regarding infrastructure, we said, okay, let us invest 5 crore rupees in building a hangar at Haridwar and for every airship, apart from the initial cost, there will be 2.25 crores for the support equipment, the mast, etc. These numbers are not assumptions, these have come from actual quotation, okay? So, today one might say 5 crores is too less for building a hangar, okay. But at that time, we made some inquiries and got this number for building a hangar of the size that a skyship 600 needs. Similarly, depreciation of 10 percent and uh, to, uh, to buy these airships, one has to take a loan and that loan will not come free. So, we assume 15 percent interest on reducing balance for taking that particular loan, okay. Then this was the cost side, now the benefits or the income side. So we are assuming that this company which operates airships would definitely like to operate with a 10 percent profit, nothing wrong in that because this profit is what is the attraction to the investor and a part of it will be invested back in the business, right. So airship is going to fly with a huge envelope, much bigger than cars or trucks. So, you can paint it with something. We assume that you can charge this amount per day for revenue towards advertisement. Then by some calculation procedure, we got the value of travel time as rupees 145 per hour as against 1000 hours of my friend. The travel time benefit was considered to be only 145 rupees per hour, okay. And therefore, the intangible benefit per person per trip is going to be 1 uh, rupees 7000. Luxury car, so 3 people in the car plus driver, okay. 40 cars per day, hence 280 cars per week and 4 trips a month because each trip takes 11 days. So, you can do cyclically and you will be able to do this way. Now, at that time, the fuel cost per kilometer was worked out to 6.5 rupees per kilometer and plane area was 5 rupees per kilometer and we gave driver rupees 200 per day plus we got some revenue from rentals also. <coughs> Similarly, Tata Sumo, now here you can put more people, okay. So we travel regularly with the Innova and we go 6, 7 people. So it becomes tight with 6 people but in hills, in hills, you will find that people travel in these vehicles with approximately 8 people in a vehicle. So, we took 7 people, okay. So, 18 vehicles per day, 196 vehicles per week, 4 trips a month. Fuel costs are lower per person. Per, per kilometer, fuel costs are much lower and driver also gets less money. Revenue also is lower. So, this is the general map for doing the cost benefit analysis. So, the costs are the cost of the airship and then the operating cost and then the cost of the infrastructure. The benefits or the income will be the advertisement, travel comfort, hence some premium, savings in time, hence a value of travel time, off season revenue when you apply it to some other place and revenue from operation or the fare that we charge. So, you take these numbers, take them uh, projected to a particular year and then you can get a comparison. So, this is the actual data which we got from the US airship, Skyship 600B. This is in US dollars. So, the cost of the airship was 5 million, utilization, pilots, ground crew, insurance, fuel, maintenance, support, ticketing, depreciation, blah, 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 blah. It comes to 
the fare comes to 2.3 dollars per kilometer so when you operate this airship in an american scenario the with 10% uh, with 10% profit it will cost the operator 2 dollars and 30 cents per kilometer okay now now we break it down to the indian conditions so the cost is the same 5 million dollars but converted into lakhs utilization also is very similar so at some places looking at the cost of manpower etc in india again we got the fare of rupees 36.9 or 37 rupees per kilometer so per kilometer travel per passenger you have to pay 40 bucks if you travel by airship okay so then this is the initial data about the airships okay i have already mentioned to you a few numbers like the number of the capacity then consumption of fuel 6 million 1 million more because this is going to be further improved upon the basic airship is 5 million but the enhanced airship is 6 million because there are enhancements to allow it to operate at higher altitude okay then here is the breakdown of the annual operating cost i'll not spend too much time these are numbers which you can see at leisure we have spreadsheets which contain all these calculations look at the doc per seat per trip so in a in an suv or in the public uh, transportation system you are going to have you know something like now this is in 1000 us dollars so if i multiply this by 1000 i get 36.7 so a passenger pays around 36 or 37 dollars for a trip with without any profit etc this is the kharcha or the expenditure that is done on the airship luxury car 113 dollars more than what is spent because there are seven people there there are six three people here so the operating costs are divided by 3 and by 7 there for the airship it is going to be 712 dollars 711.9 so you will spend a lot of money but if you look at the revenue if you look at the investment etc you find that to break even in the suv you require just 8 years so somebody puts money buys suvs runs this business everything goes well in 8 years you recover the full money assuming very little profit for luxury car you need 18 years for airship you need 14.61 years but in this analysis this is purely and purely on the basis of the no benefit for travel time and no aerodynamic etc basic okay so this is in lakh rupees so if i change the number slightly and if i bring in little bit of uh, other numbers it so happens that you can break even in just 3 years instead of the 8 years this is this this particular graph comes with the additional revenue with luxury car you need one more year with airship you can do it in the first year itself because you can earn a lot of money in airships with other facilities like aerodynamic on the balloon and you can charge a premium for travel time saving and comfort okay so if you look at the net present value comparison now what is meant by net present value the investment happens over years you have to bring it back to today keeping in mind the possible inflation okay that is called as npv on that present value so for tata sumo the costs are very low the benefits are also not very high but they are more than the costs for luxury car it's a larger number for airships there is a very very huge cost but also a very huge benefit okay so summing up the numbers in rupees so the fare that you will pay per per passenger in tata sumo is around 3750 rupees luxury car 10000 airships 17000 rupees okay and if i assume that 7000 rupees per trip 
I am happy to pay for the comfort and the time saving. You are becoming equivalent to a luxury car. Okay. So, then we did some sensitivity analysis. What happens? Suppose we say no revenue from advertisement and intangibles are less than the airships will take much, much more year, 8 years for you to recover. Okay. So, basically what it means is that the investment required when you want to operate airships is very high. Okay. So, it is 250 times higher than compared to the SUVs and 35 times higher than compared to luxury car. So, that means you need very deep pockets to take this risk. Okay. But if you include value of travel time, there can be a very, very strong argument. So, if 100 US dollars, 6000 rupees per day is what you value as one day, then airships become attractive. Additional revenue can be also obtained using advertisement and product promotion. And the break even point, whether it is one year or eight years or six years, is a very strong function of the assumptions, obviously. So, do not get swayed by one year and eight years and all that. As I said, these numbers can change drastically with the change in the assumptions. Basic point is that investment may be needed of a high magnitude, but the returns are also of very high magnitude. So, therefore, a risk taker can invest. And uh, SUV needs the least time to break even, but also the revenues are very less. So, SUV investment in SUV is the most conservative option. Investment in the airship will be a very, very bold option. Okay. So, in conclusion, for Chardham Yatra, assuming that an airship can be made by improving something like Skyship 600B to handle the altitudes, a very big assumption then it is feasible. Okay. Payback can come in the first year only for the airships and third year for the Tata Sumo and fourth year in luxury car. This is assuming that you earn a good amount of revenue from advertisement. Okay. And if you assume that there is no revenue from advertisement and if you assume 90 rupees per hour only as the value of travel taking time, it takes 8 years for you to recover. So, in a transportation system, especially when the investment comes in a large part from the government or from a, some other uh, some other investor, if the recovery of your revenue in the worst case scenario happens in 8 years and in the best case scenario in 1 year, it is a very good case for investment. Okay. So, this particular study was presented by me to Dr. Kalam when uh, I met him in the year 2001. In fact, I am wrong. The study was done in the year 2000. And in 2001, we got the data. And in 2001, uh, 2001 March, I had gone to New Delhi with Professor Sane, who was that time working in our department. We both met Dr. Kalam because we were proposing a project for study of use of airships in Uttaranchal. So, this is the case study I presented and uh, <clears throat> at many places it got presented. The numbers of course can be questioned. Uh, I am not saying that uh, I would put my 1 rupee or 100 rupee in this venture based on these numbers. But we did this study essentially to satisfy ourselves whether this is an area worth getting into or not. The common perception people have is, oh, airships are very expensive. They will be, you know, you will take so many years, you will never be able to recover. So, those numbers, of course, we have answered. Okay. 